when should you speed the ball up off the bounce in pickleball versus playing it safe? And how do you properly execute this shot without getting burned by a counter or hitting it deep? We're gonna go over all of that and more in this video. And be sure to stay to the end because we're giving away $1,000 worth of Selkirk store credit split between five lucky winners. Be sure to stay to the end to figure out how to enter. All right, let's jump into it. So I know you know those moments in pickleball where all four players are at the line and there's a longer dink rally that's happening and you're just waiting for someone to pull the trigger first and speed that ball up off the bounce. That is what we're talking about for the sake of this video. But first, we're gonna talk about what ball you should look to speed up versus playing it safe. So the first thing that we're gonna go through are types of balls to speed up because the reality of this shot is you can't and you really shouldn't hit it on every single dink at the kitchen line. So there are primarily three different balls to really look for when you're considering hitting this shot. Now, the first ones that we're gonna talk about is a passive dink versus an aggressive dink, okay? So an aggressive dink is gonna be a dink that has like a lot of action on it. Maybe it's pushing me around the kitchen line, it's pushing me back, it's pulling me off balance. That's not gonna be a type of dink that I'm gonna wanna do this shot on because there's a lot of variables going on meaning that the chances of me hitting an unforced error are pretty high. Now a passive dink is going to be a dink that maybe is a little bit slower. There's not a ton of spin on it. I'm already in a good position to hit it. That's a way easier shot for me to speed up because there are less variables. The next type of ball that you guys should be aware of has to do with the depth of it into the kitchen and transition zone. So for example, if I'm getting really shallow dinks that are pulling me really close to the net, this is gonna be a very hard ball for me to speed up because oftentimes I'm gonna end up hitting it in the net or hitting it out completely. So instead, I want you to really look for dinks that are gonna push you back super far, but they're just easier to speed up since you're not jamming yourself with the net really close to the kitchen. Now, the last thing that you should keep in mind when you're picking the type of ball that you want to speed up actually has to do with the height of the bounce. Now, if I'm getting a ball that isn't bouncing very high, it's going to be really hard for me to speed that up. And I'm really going to end up hitting that out because I'm having to pull my paddle down really low. It's very hard to hit a speed up from your shoelaces. Okay. So instead, look for dinks or balls that bounce really high because this is just way easier to end up hitting a good speed up off of. So now that you know the type of ball to look for, we're gonna talk about how to actually execute this shot with technique. So the first thing I want you to think about is your paddle positioning. Now, because you're at the kitchen line, it's very important that you hit top spin on the ball, meaning that you apply the rotation and the spin where the ball starts spinning towards your opponent, okay? That's gonna help keep the ball in because remember, we're hitting this from the kitchen line. So in order to do that, you need to really hit this ball with your tip down. I like to think of it around the four or five o'clock mark on a clock. That's kind of where my paddle tip is pointing. Now, as I hit through the shot, that tip is gonna rotate from that five o'clock area on the clock to about a one or two o'clock, okay? So it's really important that you're hitting this shot, tip down, and then it's gonna rotate up to that two o'clock position. Along with that, it's really important to know that this is gonna be a compact swing, okay? Um, a big mistake that I see people make is they'll take a really big back swing, and what ends up happening is they hit the ball out. So it's really important that as you hit it, um, you're hitting the ball in front of your body. It's very short and compact. Last thing to remember, even though it's short and compact, you have to put a little less on the ball. So think about hitting this at about a 60%. When you put all this together, you'll have your speed up. This next secret I'm about to share with you is really important when it comes to speeding up the ball and it's often overlooked. There's a lot of people out there who have great speed ups but they don't know where to aim the ball. So this tip that we're gonna go over 
has to do with placement, okay? So, so I've decided now that I have a good ball to speed up. I know that I'm gonna be short and compact with a nice 60% flick, but where do I wanna aim? So I wanna go over the attacking zones, okay? So let's call this zone one on your opponent. So at the backhand side, and then zone two is gonna be right here in front of the body, okay? Zone three would be this spot right here on the right side of the body, still defending with the backhand. And then zone four would be the forehand, okay? So when you're aiming this ball, a great place to aim is right in between zones three and four. If you can make people guess on whether they're hitting a backhand or a forehand, you're gonna create a lot of pop-ups. So think somewhere in the realm of that right hip area, and you really wanna see if you can maybe create that chicken wing. This is a great spot to aim when speeding the ball up. This next tip for placing your speed up will frustrate a lot of your opponents, and honestly, you're gonna win a lot more points. So in this tip, you're gonna actually put a little bit more on the ball. So previously, when we were aiming for that right hip, it was just like a 60% speed up, and we were trying to create a pop-up for the next ball. But for this tip, I actually want you to aim right at their body, okay? And instead of 60%, you're gonna speed it up more, it's about 80%. In, re in reality, if they don't get out of the way, the ball's probably going out, so it's a high risk, high reward play, but a lot of it really great players will actually aim right at your body. And I know that, that can seem a little controversial. We're not trying to injure anybody, but really trying to hit through somebody is a great tactic to win more points. So to put all this into practice, we have a drill in the form of a game for you, okay? So the way that this works is you're gonna have a partner across from you and this is called the half court game, okay? So we're shrinking the court into a half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna serve just like we would in pickleball with a cooperative serve. The serve has to bounce in the kitchen or else you're gonna redo it. And the return has to bounce. After the serve and the return, the point is live, but you're only playing on this half of the court. And then once you've completed the game, you could switch to the other side. All right, so she sped the ball up first. Now it would be her serve, so zero, zero. Go ahead, nice cooperative serve. And now the point is live after the ball bounces on the return and anyone can speed the ball up. All right, so let's say she won that point. Now it's one, zero, and she's going to serve. And you're gonna work on that speed up. So again, that 60% speed up, aiming at the left hip or right hip, or maybe even that 80% speed up right into the body. Once you get to 11, you're gonna switch sides and play from the other side. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you give it a like and subscribe to the playpickleball.com YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comment section below. And as we mentioned before, we're giving away $1,000 worth of Selkirk store credit split evenly between five lucky winners. To enter the giveaway, you can find the link in the description below. We'll see you on the next one.